Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Valley Lives, the show for Lehigh Valley's local musicians. Tonight, our sponsors are Moravian Academy and Blue Chip Sound, and we want to thank them for their support in making this event possible. Tonight, we have an incredible folk artist from Orfield, Pennsylvania. He is an award-winning songwriter and musician, and his talent is unmatched in the Lehigh Valley. Bringing us his originals tonight, we have Russ Rentler. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you, Dylan, and uh, for letting me come and share tonight with you. I hope you're all doing okay and, and hanging in there. It's been a crazy couple months, and uh, just hang in there, wear your face mask, and um, wash your hands and do all those things. We were wearing my face masks right before the uh, setup. It just doesn't sound as good if I uh, <clears throat> kind of sing like this. It just sounds a little muffled, so I can... So not to do that. That first song is called uh, Footsteps. It's an instrumental I wrote many years ago. And next song I'm going to do is a song that I uh, wrote called New Car Smell. It was a true story about the first new car I ever had. And that, had that new car smell didn't last very long. And uh, they played this on NPR. And uh, it's the, my kind of, um, it was real exciting to, to have, a, have them play it. And that 50 cents won't get me a coffee at Wawa, but it's still... Uh, it's a cool song. When I got my new car and I drove it off the lot Spilled my cup of coffee and it was steaming hot The aroma of the coffee beans and the cream as it did rot Made me suddenly realize that my new car smell was shot I like to eat my breakfast when I'm on the run. Banana peels and hard boiled eggs, oh, they're so much fun. I like to toss the apple cores, and empty yogurt cups over my left shoulder, cause I think it brings me luck. That new car smell has never been much to me, never even been a possibility. The aroma of this sweet old earth is for my cup of tea. I got a compost pile growing underneath my seat. Well, my wife, she won't drive with me unless the windows are rolled down. 
My neighbors hold their noses as we drive it into town. But we don't need the heat on cause we're warmed organically. I got a compost pile growing underneath my seat. Well, my son, he wanted to borrow my car to go out on a date. I told him to use protection, those gas masks are great. He told me not to worry, cause his girlfriend would understand. Cause she was the daughter of the road rooter man. That new car smell has never been much to me. Never even been a possibility. The aroma of this sweet old earth is more my cup of tea. I got a compost pile growing underneath my seat. Well, once I was pulled over by an Easton traffic cop. When I rolled my window down, his countenance did drop. I knew I was in trouble, but I didn't know what to say. When he called in reinforcements from the EPA Well, sometimes I do wonder if I'm a hazard on the road One more rotten sandwich and I know she could explode While we're worried about those weapons far across the deep blue sea Driving through your neighborhood in a WMD That new car smell has never been much to me Never even been a possibility The aroma of this sweet old earth is more my cup of tea I got a compost pile growing underneath my seat I got a compost pile growing underneath my seat Thank you very much. Thank you. I can t telepathically hear you clapping and saying, so that's, uh, that's why I say thank you. Plus, I just appreciate, I want to thank you guys for just uh, listening to the music and, and being willing to kind of take part in these virtual events. Next instrument I'm going to play is a very special instrument to me. It's called a corded zither or an auto harp. And a friend of mine named Bob Taylor made this in the 19 late or mid 1980s he was one of the premier auto harp makers at the time and um it's his birthday today so i uh, wish bob taylor a happy birthday it's not the same taylor as taylor guitars um it's a different bob taylor but if you go to my facebook page and you see his name you can wish him a happy birthday happy birthday bob this is a beautiful auto harp and bob gave me this auto harp many many years ago and it got me started on this incredible journey of auto harp playing
much. Thank you. Those were two songs about 300 years apart. And if you know them, you can go to my Facebook and write them down. And if you got them right, maybe I'll send you a free CD. We'll see. First person who can uh, come up with that. Um, and if you already know it, then maybe you, you can let somebody else win the CD. So, folks, how are you guys doing with the, with the virus? Um, <clears throat> in my other life, I used to be a medical doctor and um, practiced for about 30 years. And I've been seeing these things on uh, Facebook, and I'm going to go medical here for a little bit. Not political, just medical. And I've been seeing these uh, memes about <clears throat> face masks not working and how it's kind of useless to wear a face mask, you know? And one of the things I was thinking is if it's so incredibly useless, why do doctors have been using them in the operating rooms for 30 years or 300 years? <laughs> um, and I also thought to myself, if I was to have an operation, I go into the operating room and all the nurses and everybody have their face masks off, I probably wouldn't want to have that operation. So there probably is some value to face masks. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, I hope that's okay. I didn't mean to be um, stepping on anybody's toes. And this instrument's called a dobro. And it's uh, kind of developed in the United States in the 1930s. And it's a slide guitar. You play with a slide up and down the neck. And uh, it's just a cool instrument. This is a song I wrote about my dog named Maggie who we were training her, and <clears throat> we were locking her in a cage all day and called crating a dog. I don't know if you've ever done that before. So you do that so they learn how to um, not poop on your expensive carpet. So I was thinking about Maggie locked up in that crate all day and how the reality is I was jealous of her because I was I had this kind of rough job at the time as a medical doctor, and uh, all day long, you know, I didn't have time to think of anything other than my patients and their welfare. And I get home and I see my dog in a crate and I was jealous of her. And I knew when I was, I had to change careers when I'd get home and be jealous of a dog locked in a crate all day. And I thought she had time all day to think up Beatles tunes and stuff. And I, I didn't have time like that, so. I said, throw me a bone. I got too much time on my hand. I said, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I feel your demand. Whoever said it's a dog's life has never lived with me. Locked up in this crate all day is a tragic destiny. Well, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I fulfill your demand. Whoever said it's a dog's life has never lived with me. Locked up in this crate all day as a tragic destiny. I said, throw me a bone, got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I fulfill your demand. Well, this brown food you're feeding me is called the science diet. Well, if it really tastes so good, why don't the scientists try it? I said, throw me a bone. I got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day till I feel your demand. If dogs could get depression, I'd be the first to know. If they made puppy Prozac, I'd take an overdose. Well, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I feel your demand. I said, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my paws. I said, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my paws. You lock me up in this crate all day, and you don't got just cause. Well, these anthropomorphisms you're teaching me are starting to make me yawn. All I want to do is empty my bladder on the lawn. Well, throw me a bone, I got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I feel your demand. If 
I can reach a telephone, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd call up the ASPCA and tell them all about you. Well, throw me a bone, got way too much time in my hand. You lock me up in this crate all day, till I fulfill your demand. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, next little tune I'm going to do is a, actually I didn't write this song. This was, um, Mark Hurd did the song and Mark was a great songwriter who's, uh, he uh, passed away when he was very young, but um, Mark was uh, just, just an amazing, Bruce Coburn actually had written a song about him after he passed away, but this is a song that kind of fits for our times. It's kind of about uh, how when everything seems dark and it just can't get any worse, somehow we have to just believe that, that someone's listening to our cries. So, when the weight of the world comes crashing down on you, he will listen to you. When the sky turns black and your thoughts turn blue, he will listen to you. He will listen to you. Always listen to you. He understands how his children feel. God will listen to you. When the river of tears cannot be contained, he will listen to you. Like the drowning man in the pouring rain, he will listen to you. He will listen to you, always listen to you. He understands how his children feel, God will listen to you. When that light explodes in a world gone wrong, he will listen to you. When your heart breaks forth to a joyful song, he will listen to you. He will listen to you. Always listen to you. He understands how his children feel. God will listen to you. He understands how his children feel. God will listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a Mark Hurd tune, which is just a just a beautiful song. Um, I'm going to play a little ukulele for you, and uh, this is the way they pronounce it. It's ukulele. Um, I started playing ukulele in 1968, believe it or not. Most of you don't realize that was in the last century. It was such a long time ago, and... Um, I thought I was getting a guitar from an S&H Green Stamps catalog, and it turns out when they, my mom brought this little uh, box home, it was, um, it turns out it was a little tiny ukulele, and I was so disappointed, but I couldn't let her know because, because she had given up her dream of having kitchen dishes so I could have that ukulele. So this is a beautiful thing. This is a little instrumental called um, called Claire.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a live audience now. This is exciting. <laughs> now I'm really going to be nervous. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little song I wrote for my wife. It's called No Tears in My Teardrop. And when I first retired from medicine, I built a teardrop camper because um, I'm very frugal and didn't want to buy one. And uh, on a Harbor Freight trailer, four by eight, and we drove across the country in a little teardrop trailer that we could tow from a car. And a teardrop was a retro kind of thing. They had them in the 30s and they're shaped like a teardrop kind of thing. And they're really cool. And there's a little galley in the back you can open up as a kitchenette. And the whole inside of it is just basically a mattress. And I put a couple um, cabinets for clothes and things. Um, and so we went to California and... Uh, hung out there and drove all the way back. And on the way back, uh, my wife said, you know, I think we're going to need a bigger camper. <laughs> so we went to um, went to Walmart and I bought a tent one night and um, set up the tent next to the teardrop. Um, and one of us slept in the tent <laughs> for the rest of the trip. <laughs> and you knew who that was. <laughs> uh, I snore a lot, so I slept in the tent. <laughs> it was just after about the 10th week, my wife said... <laughs> <laughs> Got to do something. So anyway, this is a song <clears throat> for, for my wife, Debbie. It's about our teardrop camper. I did end up building a bigger one, so it's called No Tears of My Teardrop. <laughs> get me down and it's easy for me to sing the blues nothing in this world can turn me round like thinking of my teardrop with you there'll be no tears in my teardrop as long as I'm camping with you with you there'll be no tears in my teardrop my campfire will always burn for you. When it looks like we're in for stormy weather, and the troubles of this world are on my mind When it seems like those clouds will last forever I think of you when you bring back the sunshine There'll be no tears in my teardrop As long as I'm camping with you, with you There'll be no tears in my teardrop and my campfire will always burn for you. Now there's nothing in this world that is better then waking up in the morning next to you Coffee brewing in the galley In our little teardrop camper I built for you There'll be no tears in my teardrop As long as I'm camping with you, with you There'll be no tears in my teardrop and my campfire will always burn for you. And my campfire will always burn for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're all so kind. Thank you. Next instrument I'm going to play is a banjo. And uh, banjo's been around probably since brought over brought over through the slave trade by the, by the Africans and uh, was then eventually picked up by the plantation owners like the sound of it and <clears throat> kind of developed their own kind of thing. But this is a truly African instrument that was, uh, they trace it back to the sub-Saharan desert and probably maybe even 600 uh, 
the year 600 is what they think the first banjos, uh, banjo type instruments. So this is an ancient instrument playing a fairly new song. I wrote this song a couple years ago. It's called Hassan's Creek and it's a little song I wrote about a creek that runs back behind my, where I live up in Orfield. <clears throat> it's not a true story, but it could be. It's, I think of it as the great American novel. It has all the elements you'd expect. It's got um, love, it's got deception, and it's based on moonshine. So I think with all those things, it could be the great American novel, in my mind at least. So. <laughs> I know a girl on Hassan's Creek I see her about once a week Skin so fair and eyes so blue I think about her all the time Pretty little girl on Hassan's Creek I'm gonna make her mine But her daddy doesn't like me very much Says I can look but I can't touch He makes moonshine up on the hill and he thinks that no one knows His secret will be safe with me if he lets his daughter go But the revenue officer is coming to town Asking questions, poking around I told her daddy I'd make him a deal if he'd give me his daughter's hand My lips would be forever sealed about the moonshine on his land Now I live on Hassan's Creek And that pretty little girl is next to me We got married and we have three kids and her daddy went to jail My father was a revenue officer but he made me never tell Thank you so much, thank you. It uh, could be a true story but Thank you. I've played that song in some other places and there's no response to it, so I appreciate you guys responding to that. I don't know what to make of that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a very old fiddle and um, I'm going to play it with a harmonica at the same time. And folks have told me that they've never seen this done before and um, I kind of, I hope that's true. Maybe I'll go down in musical history as being the only... Um, it's really going to go down to history as somebody who had too much time on their hands, but anyway. So playing the violin, a non-fretted instrument with a harmonica is akin to, somebody said, how do you do that? And I said, well, it's kind of like riding a, um, riding a unicycle with, um, riding a unicycle blindfolded while you're juggling chainsaws with a backpack filled with rabid monkeys that are locked in the back of your backpack. That's what this feels like when I play, so if that makes any sense to you. This is an old tune from Texas, West Texas, called Westphalia Waltz. Probably is really from Europe originally. So you can all dance a waltz if you want tonight. It's a...
thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you folks online couldn't see, but some of the, the folks here <laughs> started waltzing, which makes me so happy because that's all I really want to do with is be good enough on fiddle to play something to make people dance. And then I could, then I'll be happy. Then I'll have accomplished everything in my life that I've ever wanted to accomplish. And you guys just did that for me tonight. So if, if I die tonight, I'm happy because, because you danced in the streets. And one lady even danced with her large uh, collie, which I thought was very sweet. What is the name of your dog, ma'am? Epiphany. Epiphany. I love that. I love that. So Epiphany is a is a is a great name for a dog. So Epiphany was dancing with with uh, with Ellen, and it was and these two folks across the street were waltzing, and I was having so much fun watching them. So <laughs> anyway, this is going to go down in the record books. So thank you. Um, how much time do I have? Where where we idle? My phone stopped. 20 minutes, okay. Um, I'm going to play a little tune for you on this. is called an octave mandolin. And, um, it's an octave lower than a traditional mandolin. I wrote this song on vacation. We were down in the uh, Bethany Beach, the Delmarva Peninsula, and uh, it was. I used to just have a week or two off a year, and we would try to rent a little place and take, their, take our kids down, and it rained the entire time. So this song is called Storm Over Delmarva, and it's just an instrumental. There's no, no words, but it kind of describes how I was feeling at the time. virtual concerts for my house for the maybe for about nine weeks when it first started and um, and uh, so I didn't have a live audience my wife would have an audience laughing uh, and clapping on the uh, iPhone it was pretty cool so so it's nice to actually have a real versus virtual uh, virtual audience this is this next instrument is an actual real mandolin this is made in 1913 by the Gibson company and it's just a classically beautiful old uh, mandolin and I've wanted one of these my whole life and finally found one that was uh, beat up enough that the price was something I could afford so next song I do is uh, last Sunday there was um, I was sitting out on my porch and it was after that week of everything between COVID and um, and the death of George Floyd it was just I was just like overwhelmed and so I was sitting on my porch and um I just started writing this kind of put together some chords and I didn't want to put words to it because I think it's it's too hard to put words to how I was feeling at the time, but I know we're all sort of feeling the same way, just kind of overwhelmed. So this this little tune is um, a wordless song called The Hymn for Justice and Peace.
Thanks so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. actually a tune by Frank Wakefield. Um, do a couple more tunes for you and then I'll let you guys go. And uh, thanks again for having me at The Valley Lives and for Dylan B. Carter and for and his family for, for hosting us and for these wonderful neighbors that are that are watching from a safe and um, safe distance, right? So I'm gonna, <clears throat> since I am about 10 miles as a crow flies from Nazareth, Nazareth, Pennsylvania is what I call the center of the uh, kind of the mecca for guitar players. Martin Guitar Factory is about 10 minutes from here, 10 miles from here. It's pretty close. My guitar is starting to vibrate. I can feel the resonance with all those other fine guitars up there. So I'm going to do a little song about Martin guitars. I wrote this when I was uh, 15 or 16 years old when I first came to Lehigh Valley driving from New Jersey. I always wanted one and thought I'd get a job to work at the factory and build one if, because I couldn't afford one. And I actually asked, I went on the tour and I asked them, I said, how do you get a job here? And they said, well, somebody has to die first because nobody wants to give up their job. And I thought, well, I'm not a doctor yet, so there's nothing I could do about that. <laughs> They're actually laughing. If when I do that joke in Jersey, it's, it goes flat. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I was never sued in 30 years, which is a miracle. <laughs> Hope and pray that that's uh, I, there's nobody else that uh, that can't say anything. When I do shows now, I always say, "Is any of my patients still alive out there?" <laughs> so it's called Nazareth Pike. They used it on their uh, telephone call waiting for a while, a long time ago. I was going through Pennsylvania one day when I met an old man. He said to me, take the Nazareth Pike, boy, and you will see. It will always take you to where you want to be. To where you want to be. So I took this man's advice and started heading north. Really hadn't gotten far when it began to pour. Baggage jet I all got wet, I just left it there And kept on traveling down the road to who, who knows where Take the Nazareth Pike, boy, and you will see It will always take you to where you want to be Take the Nazareth Pike, my friends, and you will see it will always take you to where you want to be. And then I came to a very busy town. Little kids were playing, there were flowers on the ground. On the outskirts of this town there was a factory where they made the most beautiful guitars that you would ever want to see. Never want to see So I went to see if I could get a job Building those guitars But they didn't need me Guess I'd come too far So I went to college Studied biology 
But you all know where my heart, where I would rather be. Take the Nazareth pipe, boy, and you will see. It will always take you to where you want to be. Take the Nazareth pipe, my friends, and you will see. It will always take you to where you want to be. Sometimes when my life starts to get me down, I pick up this old guitar and listen to the sound. It takes me back down to the days when I was a youth. If you keep on pressing on your dreams, your dreams can come true. My dreams have come true. Take the Nazareth Pike boy and you will see. It will always take you to where you want to be. Take the Nazareth Pike, my friends, and you will see. It will always take you to where you want to be. Where you want to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do um, one or two more songs. And um, thank you all for coming out tonight. So I'm going to do a, a song that's um, near and dear to my heart. It's, it's a true story about my uh, sweet grandma who, uh, when she was 14 years old, was blinded by a violin string that broke when she was playing it. She was a very talented person, but that very put a real kind of, um, sort of upset her plans, and uh, she became somewhat of a bitter um, woman and turned to the bottle, unfortunately, after that, and never played again. But my grandma, despite that, it was a redemptive story, and this is a story of redemption. I ended up getting um, God her violin, as well as her ukulele, which was very sweet. My grandmother, despite the fact that she was a chronic alcoholic, loved Prevention Magazine, and that doesn't make any sense to me, but um, it was interesting. My grandma was a sweet lady, but she said to me, you're a Capricorn, right? And I said, yeah. She said, well, you're going to have bad luck your whole life. I thought... How many grandmas tell their eight-year-old that? And um, But when the violin broke and hit her in the eye, it, it causes disfigurement where her whole eye was opacified, kind of like if you've ever seen Marilyn Manson, that punk rocker. He has this uh, white um, pupil in his eye. It's just scary looking. So my grandma was kind of scary. So when she came over, it was always a little bit of with uh, fear and trepidation. Never knew what was going to happen or come out of grandma's mouth. So it's called One-Eyed Grandma... And it's a true story. I got a one-eyed grandma, and you know she loves to imbibe. I got a one-eyed grandma, and you know she loves to drink right. When she comes over to visit, I look for a place to hide. Oh, when Grandma was a little girl, she played the violin. One day a string broke and did her eye in. So she put down the fiddle and she picked up a bottle of rye. Now I got a one-eyed Grandma and you know we don't see eye, do I? Oh, Grandma used to tell me that sugar was white death. Hey, Grandma, can I light you up another cigarette? It's amazing to me that she lived to be 85. When she spent most of her lifetime completely anesthetized. I got a one-eyed Grandma, and you know she loves to imbibe. I do this at vacation Bible schools. I got a one-eyed Grandma, and you know she loves to drink rye. You can sing along. When she comes over to visit, I look for a place to hide. Oh, Grandma.
grandma used to tell me I was a Capricorn. She said I had bad luck from the day that I was born. Well, I thank you, grandma, for building my self-esteem. Well, if it wasn't for Jesus, my best friend would be Jim Beam. Ah, oh, you're all probably wondering how I stay so clean. It's the grace of God and St. Caffeine. But I keep my psychologist number. You know, I keep it on speed dial. At 150 bucks an hour, she says I can call her anytime. I got a one-eyed grandma, and you know she loves to imbibe. I got a one-eyed grandma, and you know she loves to drink right. When she comes over to visit, I look for a place to hide. Oh, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. I got a mama who likes her cheap whiskey. Well, mama and my grandma both love the fruit of the vine. And when they get together, those sparks, those sparks are gonna fly. I know this story's been sad and I'm not too proud, but there's a silver line into this hereditary cloud. Cause I thank my grandma for giving me this musical gene. And that three string violin that she left me. so much thank you i'm gonna do one more song is that okay and uh thank you guys for clapping that makes me happy too i can um i appreciate that it's i always worry you know so um i'm worried that maybe the venue guy he paid you to clap so that's uh, it's a self-esteem problem but i'll get over it someday um so anyway thank you again my name is russ rentler you can go to my facebook page or my website russrentler.com if you want to hear my music and um, you can go to iTunes and you could download download my my stuff if you want. Um, this last song I do for you is uh, the title track of one of my uh, an album I came out with in 2006 called "The uh, Scarecrow's Lament," and this is a true story. At least it's in my own mind a true story. I was watching The Wizard of Oz very late at night. Uh, watching the Wizard of Oz on DVD very late at night after drinking way too much coffee. And in this state of caffeination, I was watching the DVD in reverse. And I noticed that, because uh, you could do that with DVDs, you could put them in reverse. And I was watching Dorothy and the Scarecrow on the Yellow Brick Road, and there was this one point when their eyes just met, and I knew that Dorothy and that Scarecrow had something going on. I knew it. They were in love. But the weird thing is Scarecrow was like 35 years old and, and she was like 15. So, you know, it was forbidden love, I imagine. So, so I wrote this song about that relationship. And I think only I know about this story, but I think it's true at least. Um, so if you get the DVD and you watch it in reverse and after drinking way too much coffee, you'll see that moment on the yellow brick road. Um, so I wrote this song about that and I placed it in the 1970s because that's kind of when I came of age. That's a long time ago. Unfortunately, these Martin guitars still got to be tuned. So, thank you so much. God bless you, Dylan. Thanks for having me tonight. Dorothy and the Scarecrow were star-crossed lovers They stepped out of their roles one moonless night They borrowed Dorothy's uncle's old Camaro And they drove it right across the Kansas line They were about an hour outside of Tulsa Listing day tracks and driving way too fast Proud Mary, she never sounded better they could barely hear the trooper's siren blast. Oh, M.E.M., where are you when I need you? We're in a storm of trouble now. And these old 
red slippers must have lost their magic. Maybe you can send a couple foul. The officer was a little less than cordial, but Dorothy charmed them with her ruby reds. She got to ride shotgun back to Kansas, while the scarecrow, he got handcuffed to the feds. Hang a judge, he threw the book at Scarecrow. Fifteen will get you twenty, you should be ashamed. Could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. Mr. Scarecrow, if you only had a brain. Oh, Annie M., where are you when I need you? We're in a storm of trouble now. And these old red slippers must have lost their magic. Maybe you can send a couple foul. Now Dorothy's back in Kansas doing homework. Scarecrow's in the slammer doing time. Some days feel longer than others when he can't get Dorothy off his mind. Some nights he dreams of flying monkeys. Some days he fears he's gone insane. He's studying to be a malpractice lawyer. It's amazing what you can do without a brain. Where are you when I need you? We're in a storm of trouble now. And these old red slippers must have lost their magic. Maybe you can send a couple foul. Oh, Annie M., where are you when I need you? We're in a storm of trouble now. And clicking my heels together just ain't working. Maybe you can send a couple foul. Maybe you can send a couple foul. Maybe you can send a couple foul. Thank you so much. God bless you. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Russ. It's been great to have you tonight. Such a talented musician of your well-known. It is incredible to have you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we have a show. Uh, Mark and Ralph Acoustic Duo will be performing next week. Uh, and you can also view the full schedule on our website. Have a good night, everybody, and stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>